Hi again. Now we know the timers are peripherals in the count, and the timers on our microcontroller can count up to a value we set in our software, we can figure out exactly what do timers count. The answer is, they can count just about anything. However, there are two wide-ranging uses for counting with timers. First, they can count the number of events that occur, or second, they can count the passing of time between events. Let's take a look at an example of a timer being used to count the number of events and then we will look at an example of counting time between events. Let's pretend that this job of being a professor doesn't really work out for me, and instead, I decide to open up a factory that makes frozen pizzas. After pizzas are made and frozen, they fall down through a chute and land on a conveyor belt. The pizzas then travel down the conveyor belt, where they are magically zapped by the Bagomatic 9000 machine that I invented to wrap them up in plastic wrap. After they're wrapped up in plastic, they travel past an electronic eye that sends out a pulse on a wire before the pizza falls into a carton. But how will I know when the carton is full of bagged frozen pizzas? I can use the output electric eye as an input to my timer and count the number of pizzas as they come off the conveyor belt. The signal coming out of the electric eye becomes a digital input to my microcontroller's timer. The timer could just count the number of pulses. Well, rather than counting the number of pulses themselves, Timers often just use the rising edges, sometimes called the positive edges, to perform their count. That way the microcontroller can ignore how long the pulse is high or low, and just looks for the rising edge. Similarly, the timer could look for the falling edges or negative edges in a signal. In either case, the timer can start counting at zero and then signal an alarm to the CPU when the number of pizzas have reached the limit that I specify in my program. For example, let's say that my program is written to sound an alarm when eight pizzas have passed the electric eye. At the timer reaches 8, it will raise a flag that the CPU can watch for to know that it needs to turn on a warning light or perhaps pause the entire operation until I get to the next crate ready to catch more pizzas. Again, this is an example of event counting. I'm counting the number of events with my timer. Now, let's look at an example of counting the time between events. Let's pretend that my frozen pizza business is so successful that I decide to offer a new delivery service where I will drive your frozen pizza straight to your home. Unfortunately, sometimes it snows near my pizza factory, and sometimes it snows a lot. Sometimes there's so much snow that the roads get covered and it's hard to see the stop signs until you're very, very close to an intersection. Will I be able to stop my car in time? It will be up to my anti-lock brakes and the timer that counts the passing of time between the events. In an anti-lock braking system, your car can have small magnets mounted on the wheels. When the car is going fast, the wheel spins fast and therefore the magnets spin very fast too. As they spin, the magnets could pass by another electronic component called a Hall Effect Sensor. This special type of device has a digital output that goes high and low when a magnet passes by it. Therefore, when the car is going fast, the signal coming out of the Hall Effect Sensor may look something like this. Because the wheels are spinning fast, there is a relatively short time between the pulses from the Hall Effect Sensor. However, when the car is going slow, the wheel and its magnets will spin slowly, and this will result in a longer time between the pulses coming out of the Hall Effect sensor. But, do you remember the snowstorm? I just saw the stop sign and tried to stop the car as quickly as possible. Well, on a slippery road, this can lock the brakes, causing the wheels to stop spinning, but allows the car to keep sliding forward. What happens to my magnets in the Hall Effect sensor when the wheels lock up? Well, in this case, the magnets have stopped spinning with the wheels, and therefore the output of the Hall Effect sensor would not change at all, it just remains constant. So, how does the timer actually make the analog brakes work? It counts the time between the events, between the pulses coming out of the Hall Effect sensor. If the time between the pulses is short, the timer knows that the car is going fast. If the time between the pulses is long, the timer knows the car is going slow. But what happens when the brakes lock? Well, suddenly the pulses will stop coming, relatively unexpectedly. This causes the timer to keep counting and counting and counting, waiting for the next pulse from the Hall Effect sensor. But at some point, my program will have a count limit that says the system has waited too long and something is going wrong. The timer will then raise a flag for the CPU to see that it waited too long, indicating that the brakes have probably locked and it's time to activate the anti-lock braking system. Just remember, timers are peripherals that count. They can count the number of events, like an electric eye counting pizzas, or they can count the time between events, like the changes in a Hall Effect sensor output.